Now to a Target 12 investigators exclusive video voyeurism. A former state lawmaker charged earlier this year with secretly taping compromising pictures of his girlfriend and sharing them with a friend. Then state senator Nicholas Kettle was charged with multiple counts of video voyeurism. But critics say as technology has made it easier to secretly record someone without their knowledge, the laws become outdated and needs to change. Target 12 investigator Tim White is here now with the details. One state representative who wants the video voyeurism bill to change says wording in the current law makes it very hard for police and prosecutors to charge someone with the crime. It counts one through ten, video voyeurism. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. Nicholas Kettle left behind his iPad at his then-girlfriend's house. What police say she found on the device launched an investigation that ultimately ended in Kettle abandoning his state Senate seat and facing charges of video voyeurism. They should be careful what they wish for by charging him with voyeurism. This set of facts, mm, you know, he didn't do it. In February, Kettle's attorney Paul DeMeo told Target 12 the video voyeurism law requires that the accused secretly take the images for the purposes of sexual gratification. And DeMeo says that will be hard for prosecutors to prove. But State Police Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Philbin says they wouldn't have charged the case if the evidence didn't fit the letter of the law. Target 12 looked at dozens of other states and not all require prosecutors to prove intent. Neighboring Massachusetts, for example, does not, but Connecticut, like Rhode Island, has the gratification language in it. Was that language a gift to defense attorneys? Uh, I would, I don't know if specifically it was defense attorneys, but they are the biggest recipient. State Representative Robert Craven has filed a so-called revenge porn bill, allowing police to charge someone if they even threaten to publicly post illicit videos or images. But the video voyeurism language will remain unchanged for now. To kind of handcuff a prosecutor to maybe prove something that can't be proved, can't be proved, is creating a cause of action under the criminal law that uh, you can't get a conviction under. A Target 12 analysis of court data finds there have been 56 video voyeurism cases since the law was enacted in 2004. 33 cases ended with a conviction or a plea of no contest. 10 were dismissed or not indicted. 13 cases are still open. Kettle's case is one of the 13 that are still working their way through the courts. Kettle has pleaded not guilty. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News. And our investigation continues. Coming up new at 6, we reveal how many people convicted of video voyeurism serve prison, prison time, and that answer may surprise you. And those details in the next hour right here on Eyewitness News. New details in a Target 12 investigators exclusive video voyeurism. Now at 6, we look at the last 14 years of court data and find very few people have served any prison time after being convicted of illegally taking illicit pictures or video of someone without their knowledge. Target 12 investigator Tim White is here now with his findings. The video voyeurism law went on the books in 2004. Target 12 is examining the statute now after a high profile case that took down a sitting state senator. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. It's a shocking case. Then state senator Nick Kettle charged in a 10 count video voyeurism case earlier this year, accused of secretly capturing nude images of his now ex-girlfriend without her knowledge and sharing those images with a friend. Kettle has pleaded not guilty, but has stepped down from office. A Target 12 analysis of court data finds there have been 56 video voyeurism cases since the law was enacted in 2004. 33 cases ended with a conviction or a plea of no contest. 10 were dismissed or not indicted. 13 cases are still open. Looking further, we find of the 33 convictions, only three people were sent to prison just for video voyeurism. One of those cases made headlines in 2012. Tony Roberts was convicted of four counts of video voyeurism after police say he set up a camera in the bathroom of a coffee shop. He was sentenced to two years behind bars. We discovered four additional video voyeurism cases also resulted in a prison sentence, but those defendants were also convicted of more serious charges, including sexual assault and child pornography. I'm not sure that society has really caught up with uh, how damaging this is to the individual who's the victim. 
State Representative Robert Craven, a former prosecutor, is looking to expand the video voyeurism statute to include revenge porn, where someone uses illicit images as a threat. The bill passed the Senate and is being considered in the House. I'm not sure the criminal justice system really understands how much that hurts and how devastating an injury it is. This being a small state, Craven is also a criminal defense attorney, and as it turns out, he represented someone convicted with video voyeurism nine years ago. That client, John DaCosta, was one of the three defendants who was sentenced to prison time. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News.